the thing we want to ask for today is very simple. We want to ask David Cameron and the UK government to remove the freedom of information exemption that the City of London has. Yeah. 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 The City of London has many privileges. It has its own private police force that's here with us today. Hello! <laughs> Everybody waves. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it has its own Lord Mayor that is an unpaid position. You essentially have to be a millionaire to take the job. Oh, that's his house right there. Yes, it yes. is. House over there. Everyone say hi to the Lord Mayor as well. Hello! Since we're getting away. <laughs> they have a special slush fund that we know nothing about, largely because of the Freedom of Information Act exemption. And they also have a seat behind Parliament, in Parliament, behind the, the Speaker of the House, to remind the Parliament of what their priorities really are. And out of all of these privileges, uh, the one that we have to start with, the one that's at the root cause of the entire global tax haven system is this Freedom of Information exemption. So that's what we demand today, and that's why we're here to spark the fire and fan the embers of a movement that's growing around the world. So thank you for being with us. Thank you for coming to the tax haven capital of the world and making your voices heard. Okay, next up we've got um, my piece of paper is falling out. Tim Street from UK Uncut. Tim, are you here? Please. Show all your love for Tim. Give it up. Oh, hi, everyone. Next up we do. Hello. How are you? I've got an umbrella. I'm not going to use it. So I'm really glad to be here today. I think this is a really important cause um, to show that we want rules. We basically want rules. And the multinational companies around the world think they don't need rules, they don't need laws, they don't need to be part of our democracy. And if they don't want to be part of our democracy, then they should just leave. We're always told, you know, oh, but what if we don't suck up and let them do what they want, then they'll leave the country. Well, the answer to that is, okay, let them go. Um, good riddance to bad rubbish, essentially. We don't want them in our country. If you want to come to our country and make millions of pounds every year and then hide it from justice, from democracy, then please leave because we've got no interest in you being here. The reason why we need to stand up to their bullying ways, because it's bullying, it's blackmail and bullying, is because we need to protect the poorest, most vulnerable and marginalised in our society who are being directly punished for the greed and irresponsibility of the richest 1% who caused the economic crisis but are in no way being made to pay for their greed and their responsibility. Justice needs to be served and that means taking from the richest, not from the poorest. And the government's cuts are expressly designed to punish the poorest, the most marginalised, so people least able to fight for themselves. And that's why we're here today and that's why it's really important to fight every day to show this country is not broke there is an alternative, and we know where those billions and trillions are. We know where they are. We know who has them. It's not rocket science to work it out. But the propaganda and the rich and powerful want to distract people and say, no, don't look at these people. Don't look at the rich, because they're the wealth creators. Well, funnily enough, when there's a strike, when people withdraw their labor, when people take direct action, when people affect uh, companies economically, somehow the wealth creators suddenly can't create wealth. And that's because wealth is created by the working people of this country and not by the billionaires and millionaires who sit at the top of the hierarchies and the patriarchies in this country. And they're the people we need to target and take down through direct action and civil disobedience every day of the week, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Direct action, civil disobedience and resistance is the only way anything is going to change in this country. So, I'd also like to do a little bit of a plug for our next day of action, UK and Cuts next day of action. So last year we did uh, a very successful action with Refuge from the Cuts, which is about taking uh, direct action, occupying the chains of Starbucks around the country to highlight the fact that they've paid very little, almost zero corporation tax in the UK in the last year, and changing them into, transforming them into refuges and other services um, for women that have been cut through this government's callous, unjust and unnecessary 
a austerity programme. The next day of action for UK um, activists around the country will be on the 13th of April. We'll be taking action against the welfare benefits, the welfare reform bill, the, 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 the disgusting bedroom tax, the cabinet of millionaire men, again punishing the poorest, when they obviously, you know, they get taxpayer funded second homes, duck ponds, moats, DVD players, whatever you want, whatever they can get actually, whatever they can milk off the state. That's the funny thing, they say they want a smaller state, they want a smaller state to the poor people, but they're quite happy to have a big state so they can line their pockets. So obviously they're not playing by the rules, or they're playing by the rules themselves, but not for everyone else. So on the 13th of April, please come and join in, check out our website, check out UK Uncut, to take action and target the millionaires. We want to evict the millionaires. If they want to evict people from their bedrooms, we're going to evict them from their houses and say, we're going to have your bedrooms. That's where we're going to live. <laughs> so I hope you take action. And well done for everyone coming out today. And good luck and congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So you love one more time for Tim from York. You can cut. Uh, for direct action there. Every single right uh, and freedom that we enjoy in this country has been won off the forces of conservatism, cons conservatism by people breaking the law. The 10-hour day, the, the 9-hour day, the end to slavery, votes for women, uh, women in universities. Um, every, every decent law worth having has been won by people breaking the law. So uh, I think we should continue to do that. Oh, did I say that out loud? I think it's policeman over there. Um, so you, uh, <laughs> Um, okay, so our next speaker um, is a Ghanaian activist and he's going to give us a whole new uh, perspective. Uh, please welcome up uh, Expo to the stage. Welcome up. Woo! Our friends, first of all, I thank all of you for coming out today on this wet day, but seeing the importance of exposing this corruption. I'm here not only speaking on behalf of citizens of the world, but representing the grassroots in Africa, which have been marginalized and in reality disenfranchised, precisely because of the support that this corrupt system gives those corrupt elements who are puppets of the system. And let us say, it's not enough for us just to oppose the corrupt leaders in our countries, but also to expose the root of that corruption, which is where we stand today. Knowing that, for example, um, $21 trillion is hidden away in tax havens, uh, which is 10 times more than what has been given in aid to the poorest countries over 20 years. And if you look at that, then it wouldn't have been necessary for us to collect taxes in the so-called developing world to be able to build. But because of the collusion between those who are supported by this very corrupt system, it's impossible to get the committed and patriotic elements of the grassroots to direct affairs in our land of our birth. I'll give an example. When Lumumba was elected by the people of Congo, he was not even allowed to be for even a single year before he was murdered. Because he was not the chosen one of this corrupt system. And that is why we in the grassroots throughout Africa are not separate from those of you who are out here exposing the corruption in the city of London. Because when this corrupt system is broken down, there will be a fairer world and there will be a more democratic world. Democracy will not come just by pretending that we are against some corrupt elements when the actual root of corruption is covered in secrecy under the FOI. And that is why the FOI has to end now. I think that is why we are here. The FOI will have to end there has to be a more democratic organization of society and if we break down the corruption in the city of London, the corruption globally will be broken down. So, I thank all of you and we are going to link up with you. I work with the Quilombo Center, a center of a new kind, which is in Africa, which is a capital city centered, 
which is within the country, away from capital city, trying to mobilize within the rural communities so that coordination starts from the rural communities and networks globally with the democratic forces of this world. We will fully support this campaign and we will link up with people across Africa to carry out solidarity events, making sure that we put pressure on the British High Commission and British embassies everywhere we can in linking up with this campaign. We are with you together, we will stop them. I will say the world we live in was not always like this. It wasn't like this from the beginning. It's been shaped by human beings. And it's human beings again that will change it. And that's the task of you and I. Thank you. On that, uh, if you want, if you want to share a few words, come to the front. Uh, before we do that, we've got a, a very special friend of mine and an awesome poet who's going to come up and do a poem about all of these very issues. Please show all of your love for Al. <laughs> Couple of quickies. The totalitarian takeover will be far less conspicuous than previously advertised. No one world government super factory farming human beings as battery cells. There'll still be a Tesco's on every corner. They'll just call it Nisa Local. No dystopian post robotic slavery future. There'll still be palm trees on the boulevards. No one dares cross out of fear. No battle royale desensitized killing machine children. There'll still be an Olympics with un Aryan role models being branded on every screen. No one single pop song blaring subliminal message into your dreams on every street corner. I'll still be here saying this poem. So I was so pleased to be in Tottenham Court Road the other day and see this beautiful advert and I looked at it and I was like, oh, there's another one going about benefit scrounges and that. I started reading it. Who's evading tax avoidance? in the city of London, and it's like the, we're forgetting adverts out there, it's like the city itself is destroying itself, it's, 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 it's barrels are starting to squirm and it's starting to produce propaganda against itself and self-destroy, and people are starting to wake up and it's beautiful that we symbolise that and we can show that with icons that every Londoner can watch and see as they walk past, but as people wake up, sometimes if you've been fed shit for so long, it can be quite a terrible thing as well, so I want to talk a little bit about the narrative of looting and who's looting from who and bringing in a bit about the riots. Westminster Magistrates, court number three. Mrs L pleads not guilty for handling stolen goods. She looks like a zombie, three nights with no sleep. It wasn't me, it wasn't me, a big plasma TV. My daughter's only four, she misses me badly, yet moved on to Crown Corp, bestowed no mercy. No bail for you, no future, no hope. Back in the Caribbean, Chianti share. The bankers play golf, forget what's going on here. Not too dry, a jug of plums, reward the machinations. Don't break their vacation from this burning nation. Sitting in court number two, it could have been you. A pair of trainers, all it takes to wreck his life, change the stakes, a moment of weakness easily done. Mr. P, 18 years young, pleads not guilty to burglary. What makes you there? I was just having fun. Everyone's doing it, kids and mums. He's a blood bro from Harringay. His one-year-old son, what will he say? When dad's out, can't get a job, and he's eight. CCTV wrecked his CRB fate. Temptations are many in our society, branding illusions, twist the stuff of dreams. Yet the ad men and celebs are still at large. Sex on the beach, tell me who's in charge. Don't break their vacation from this burning nation. Just round the corner from my humble abode, the Pembury boys are having a go. It's 5 verse E9, E8 are the losers, and 16 too posh, but beggars aren't choosers. Brave and kick and fetch coming, quick run from an orgy of fire that charred and scarred the hood. Corner shops close shutters and border up with wood. They sweep away the glass and clear the debris. Community groups clean the streets, but can't they see? No amount of grooming clears the phantom of looting from our broken city. 
The first of blame is in the air. The neighbors in chains and please don't care. The black man is chained in the white media system. Dead voices cry out, but the policemen won't listen. They're filling the prisons with contractual condemnation. While the real things in offshore havens speed off inflation. Don't break their vacation from this burning nation. Thank you. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. One more time, show you love for you. Also, guys, so um, unless anybody wants to come up and say a few words, oh yes, we have our first, our uh, first uh, speaker. Yeah, what's your name, madam? Julie. Julie. Round of applause to Julie. <laughs> To pick up on a point earlier, which was made about bedroom tax, um, there's demonstrations going on throughout the country, 60 demonstrations, uh, there's one here in London, uh, I think it's a really, really important moment, people are organising, and it's something that um, I hope we can show solidarity with. Occupy London are thinking of having a general assembly about how we can discuss this matter, and also how we can re re resist evictions, that's what's been happening in Europe, in Spain and America, people are saying let's come together and let's support people, so I hope you'll come together and join in that. Thank you, Julie. Well put. Uh, nice. So, anyone else? No. Yeah, Obi. Welcome up, Obi. Give him a round of applause. <laughs> Hi, guys. Sorry. I just like, I was actually a bit late. I was in the Cape, uh, the Whittington, uh, local energy demo in the Islington. A couple thousand people, which is good. Unfortunately, nothing from uh, the BBC. Same thing about the bedroom tax, which Julie uh, didn't mention, is the fact is that. Uh, I'm um, getting tweets as well and they're saying this, it's not being mentioned by the BBC at all. So, uh, please be the media, take photos, uh, tweet it out, and yeah, take videos. And uh, yeah, just upload it to the net. Thank you. Yeah, we just can't rely on the BBC anymore. <laughs> 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 you can't rely on the BBC anymore, no says somebody from the audience. Absolutely right. Yeah, so um, there's loads of, loads of stuff that we can do next time we're, we're all online, guys. Um, LondonTaxHaven.org uh, is the place where we can find this petition. We've got already 20,000 signatures in the space of a week. Um, keep passing it around. Let's send a really strong message to the people here in the city of London that we're no longer happy with them being the tax haven uh, of the world um, and uh, more importantly um, let's get back on the street sometime soon because this is so much more fun than being sat in front of the internet frankly uh, and this is uh, so much more more beautiful uh, than doing that so I'll see you all next time on the streets because that's where it begins and that's where it ends frankly it is on the street there is no justice there is just us have a wicked afternoon we're going to have back with our, our samba band rhythm of resistance give yourselves a big round of applause coming out today goodbye Okay. Hi guys, thank you for joining us. Uh, please tweet us out, send it to Facebook. Hashtag everything, OLSX. Hashtag OLSX and, uh, and uh, hashtag bedroom tax. Are you doing that? Uh, you are not occupied in your at the moment? Yes. Excellent. Good. <laughs>
Okay, thank you guys for uh, joining us. It was great. Uh, well, it's a start. So we'll continue doing um, doing this. Anyway, if you could actually uh, keep checking this out, share book, uh, share it on Facebook, and all that sort of thing. Oh yeah, and also uh, if you manage to uh, you uh, did some uh, video as well, didn't you? That was pretty. A little bit, but I was trying not. To, yeah, just when you were talking, I noticed you were filming, so I started to. Film. I, I, and I filmed them a little bit before as well, but I haven't um, one of them uploaded them. No, 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 a couple of them I haven't uploaded yet. Okay, we'll do. I should do that. Okay, thanks guys, and um, yeah. So, uh, catch you later, and uh, well, peace out uh, from the really big society. <laughs> yeah.